So, a short time before recording this audio track, one of my cats noticed that it started to rain outside. I went out and sat with him for a few minutes while he looked around in some form of an attempt to find out where all of the bird song was coming from. And with next to no traffic on the roads, we could more clearly than usual hear the hoots of an owl, the crowing of a cock, and the chirping of a variety of birds. A bright red cardinal found shelter up in a tree as the rain began to pick up, and we decided to head back in before we got too wet. And I decided that I wanted to talk a little bit about isolation and solitude. Over the past few weeks, and likely going into the next few weeks, many of us are spending more time inside of our homes as we are being told to self-quarantine. Some of us are working from home, some of us are collecting or attempting to collect unemployment benefits in the United States. Even some people are still in the workforce, manning registers, stocking supplies with food, working on farms, engaging in construction to ensure the skeleton of society, that is the streets, the internet, electricity and plumbing, and so forth, are, are still functioning as intended. Meanwhile, those at home are watching the Tiger King and playing Animal Crossing, spending more time than ever consuming media and finding new entertainment online. We're buying all of the Nintendos, the virtual reality headsets, the home workout equipment, puzzles and board games, all that we can find at the stores so that when we hole up, we don't go stir-crazy. And strangely, at the same time, divorce rates are apparently rising as spouses and families spend more time together. One has to wonder if being stuck at home with your loved ones could ever be thought of as a bad thing. <laughs> I would say that you probably shouldn't marry someone and reproduce if you aren't absolutely certain that you actually like them. I personally do not have children, but I would assume that if I did, that I would not dread the thought of spending quality time getting to know them and teach them myself from home. It's very strange, and we are quite an odd species. Anyways, I've been thinking a bit about how our traditions relate to the ideas of solitude and isolation. Certainly, the Roman Catholic world is largely based upon retreat. Practitioners often spend days in solitude, consecrating that time to practices of prayer and penance. This sort of thing even goes beyond the beginnings of Christianity or the Christian way of life. And the same can be said about Buddhism and other philosophies of Eastern heritage. The idea of spending time alone has been with us all along, and it didn't start with Walden Pond. And when we read the news, or see other people's experiences during this time, we might notice that cabin fever is occurring. People are even leaving the house and going out into public because they're bored. And that can't be good during a time when the curve is trying to be flattened by precisely that, staying home. But 
what is boredom? Surely we can all remember a time in our childhood when we complained about being bored. It's this strange sort of feeling that you have a sort of a sort of hole torn into your schedule and you don't quite know what to do with yourself. It can be a very confusing feeling if it's felt out of nowhere. But boredom might be giving us a glimpse into our cravings. We might feel frustrated and empty. So in order to deal with this sensation of boredom, we try to find an activity to fill the void. And sometimes it sticks for a while. Sometimes it's just a temporary bandage that has to be replaced every so often. And we're willing to very creatively seek out new distractions that we might have never come up with previously. And apparently this, all of this, is even causing interpersonal relationships and marriages to sour and end. I would even go so far as to say that we are absolutely terrified of the idea of solitude. Being all alone, without distractions, and without the busybodiness that we typically exhibit, without anything to entertain us and to fill our time with. This is a deep, deep fear, and it's probably related to our sense of self. So I wonder, do we even feel real when there isn't something out there to confirm our identity and our very existence? If we do feel real, do we do we feel comfortable sitting with our own thoughts? Are some of us terrified of what we might find if we allow our minds to think on their own without any external stimulus? This is what I think is happening now. All of our inner demons, for lack of a better term, are collectively coming up to the surface. We are perhaps for the first time seeing for ourselves who we really are deep down. And that is a bundle of anxiety, a quaking mess, a collection of fears and terrors that are petrified by the idea of being found out. A pathetic little ego starving for attention, starving for recognition, and starving for confirmation. So laying all of this out is really one way to enter into the so-called mysteries. This is the big kahuna, the, the real thing that we ought to be holding dearly and that ought to be important to us, frankly. It's the one thing that causes all of our delusions and all of our neurotic behaviors. And so if we really want to become comfortable living in our own skins, we must at least make an attempt to come into contact with and to understand this fearful self inside of us. If we can do that, we can begin to see that it creates so many facets of pain that make our human experience less than what it could be. And clinging so definitively to this sense of self, we find that when circumstances get tough, it's me that's suffering. Poor little me wishes things would go back to the way they were a few months ago. Poor little me wants this thing to end already so I can go back to living my normal life. But the problem with all of this is that we're not really in control. We think we are, but we are not. Our environment and nature herself don't give a damn about our feelings, thoughts, or emotions. 
If we can really pound this into our skulls, we might find that there is a way to experience in which less frustration and headaches occur. That there is a way to get past this thick layer of cobwebs that the spooky spiders guard us from exploring. Perhaps we can find that true peace and stability can arise from these muddy waters and dark depths. And instead of identifying with the little me that doesn't want to be alone with itself, we can potentially identify with much more than that. We can go fully into our states of boredom and feel them for what they are. We can expose ourselves without any protective activity and busybodiness, and find that spontaneous action has been hiding here all along. So going into these emotional states and feelings, without judgment, just feeling them in the moment, and taking it all in, can be a very positive experience. We can learn more about ourselves by doing nothing, than by constantly running around and filling our time with nonsense. So, in a way, as small as it may be, there can be seen a silver lining to this time of fear, death, suffering, destruction, what feels like the end of the world to some. We can intelligently use this time, so long as we're healthy, to grow as individuals and come out of this thing more intact than we were before.